Yours are too big. Watch where you're swinging those things. So much fun. <laughs> you ready for this? Mm-hmm. We're saying pasta la vista to old store-bought pasta while we say hello to making fresh homemade pasta in suit. Pasta la vista, <laughs> huh? Mm-hmm. Welcome back to Bow and Emery Unleashed. We're back with another cooking and baking video. If you saw our last one, we had made German pancakes, but this time we're doing something a little bit more in depth. Today we're making actual homemade pasta. We're gonna have a lot of fun doing this and we'll see where it goes. Hopefully not make a huge mess. We will. But that's kind of inevitable. This recipe is pretty straightforward. We're gonna do it without any fancy equipment or anything. So if you want to follow along at home, you're more than welcome to. Mm -hmm. um, the first ingredients that you need, or the only ingredients that you need, are uh, all-purpose flour. We have 100 grams, and then one egg, plus additional flour for dusting later on. First step, I'm gonna take the flour, I'm gonna dump it on your clean counter, make a little mountain, and then get ready to Get your hands nice and floury. I'm gonna take my ring off. Yeah. And you're gonna make a little well in the center of the flower, almost like a little volcano. Mm -hmm. And it has to be big enough to fit the egg and you don't want it to like overflow the sides. So make it pretty wide and deep. It's okay if you see a little bit of like countertop exposed at the bottom. I feel like my depth perception is like this is horrible. <laughs> off in suit. Like I can't tell like how deep things are or <laughs> yeah. like how big things are. And once you have your well, you're gonna crack the egg into it. All right. Should I try the one-hander? Try the one-hander and press us. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not happening. Uh oh. I'm kind of a, <laughs> a little bit of a letdown on that, but. Wow, that is a tough... Why did they break on top? Woo! Okay, well... <laughs> oh my goodness, come on. <laughs> this is okay. <laughs> Very unconventional way of breaking an egg. All right, next, we're gonna beat the egg, almost like we're trying to make a scrambled egg inside of the little well here. So you're gonna scramble it a little bit and then gradually you're gonna start kind of pushing some flour into the center to start developing the dough. This is so scary, I can't like gauge anything with these <laughs> eyes. Start to kind of put some flour in there. And you can be a lot more aggressive with this than we're being, but you just don't wanna make too much of a mess with our suit heads on. And chances are you're probably gonna get like a little volcano breach and the egg's gonna start spilling out everywhere. That's when, if you have a bench scraper, you just kind of scrape everything together and, and just try to keep it cohesive. All right, and then once it starts really forming like a pretty cohesive mass here, you can be pretty generous with just like dumping flour into it. Um, you don't necessarily wanna put all of your flour into it right away because um, depending on the size of the egg or what type of flour you're using, it might um, hydrate at different levels. So we are just looking to get a nice soft kind of sticky dough. So once you feel like the fork isn't really doing a whole lot in terms of mixing because it's pretty sticky and clumped together, that's when you're just gonna go in with your hands, kind of add some flour, and then you're gonna just kind of fold it on top of itself, start kind of kneading it. And again, try not to use all the flour because you're just gonna gauge how much you need to um, 
make it kind of a nice firm sticky dough. And I guess sticky is not the right word. I'd say tacky. So like a little bit, like if you put your finger on it, it kind of grabs it a little bit, but it's not like gonna completely stick to your finger. And, but you also don't want it so dry that it's kind of like flaky. That's when you've gone a little bit too far with it. All right, so we have our dough balls formed here. Um, we ended up having way more flour than we needed. Um, I think 100 was kind of a large amount. I'm not sure why recipes suggest that sometimes, but again, it kind of depends on the size of your eggs and the type of the flour that you're using. It's mostly just by feel. But now we are gonna knead this dough for probably like eight minutes, mm -hmm. <laughs> just until it's um, quite tacky and very smooth. Like you can form just a nice smooth ball and it's just tacky to the touch, so. If you wanted to get a good workout in today, this is exactly what we'll need to do. We should just make them watch us knead for eight minutes <laughs> with utter silence, no com commentary. Enjoy the lo-fi. It's like Play-Doh. Yeah. Yeah. This is fun. Play-Doh consistency for sure. <laughs> As far as kneading technique, I like to kind of lengthen it out a little bit, fold it in half forwards, and then push forward with your palm, and then rotate, fold, push. You kind of just do that, but whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. All right, so once you feel like it's good, you're gonna form it into a nice ball. We're gonna throw some plastic wrap around it. And then we're gonna let it sit in the fridge for about at least 30 minutes. All right, so what I like to do is take it, put the roll in upside down, and kind of wrap it up like this, bundle it up, and then twist it. Let us know in the comments, what do you call this? Do you call it plastic wrap, cling wrap, saran wrap? Mm -hmm. What are the other ones? I think that's, uh... That's all. I think that's it. Our little dough balls are going to rest in the fridge for 30 minutes, and we will be back. Welcome back to Cooking and Baking with Bo and Emery. We just got these out of the fridge, and so we're going to unwrap them and roll them up. Oh, mine's sticky. It's a little, little sticky when uh -oh. you take them out. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> um, this is still, this is still a learning experience for us as well. So what you wanna do, dust your surface. So you just wanna have like a light flour on the surface so that your dough doesn't stick too much to the counter. You don't want to like over flour it, especially at the very beginning because we're going to do something called laminating. You're going to kind of stretch out your dough. Um, it doesn't have to be super, super thin yet because what you're going to do is you're going to take one third and kind of fold it over the middle. And then you're going to take the other third and fold it over the top. And then you're going to take a rolling pin and roll it out. And since we only have one rolling pin, I'm gonna use my water bottle that I <laughs> thoroughly cleaned 
around the outside. So, so for the first couple times that you're rolling it out, it doesn't have to be super, super thin. Again, because you are going to repeat the lamination process. So folding one third over, the other third over. All right, so we're gonna repeat this lamination three times. So four total times? Well, sorry. We're gonna do the lamination three times. Three times, okay. Yeah, and this is just helping develop that, that network gluten so that you get a nice chewy, springy noodle. So we're trying to get this pretty thin. It might put up a bit of a fight early on just because it's not totally like relaxed. Ooh, oh, a little bubble. So you want to roll it out so that it's pretty um, long and narrow, like like noodle length. And mm -hmm. uh, the width is not super super important. Yeah, that's probably a little too long. Looks pretty good. Quite the process. Mm. You really gotta, you really gotta like smash into it. Feels kind of like paper. Yeah. So once you feel like you have achieved a desired thickness, Ooh. Um, <laughs> just make sure that you get a nice flowering on both surfaces. Because what you're gonna do next is kind of roll it up. And be generous because it's not gonna hurt to have extra flour here. You're gonna kind of take maybe an inch or two and fold it, not like crease it, but just kind of lay it over the top. And then you're gonna kind of start rolling it back until you have like a nice little roll here. And then to throw that on some, what? <laughs> Eat it. Eat it to what? Yeah, it's finished, it's a burrito now. It's like a little crepe. Your blade, good sir. Food war style. Yeah. So then you're just gonna cut this roll into little strips, make them as narrow as you want or as thick. Probably don't want super, super thick pasta. When you unroll them, you get a little noodle. And then I am just going to lay out the noodles in kind of like a star shape. And every once in a while, um, I would probably apply a little dusting of flour to the noodles because you don't want them to kind of stick together and clump up. <laughs> flour on these bad boys. And then my favorite part is you kind of pick it up by the middle. And look at that. You've got a nice little clump of noodles. Oh no. And then you kind of <laughs> form it into a little nest. I kind of like to jumble it around a little bit so that the center part doesn't like stick together. Get them all nice and coated with that flour. I swear, the first time that you do this, the satisfaction that you feel with yourself of like, look, I just made these noodles <laughs> all by myself. And it's it's not too hard. There is a bit of a learning curve with it, but it's doable and it's tasty. It's gratifying. Yeah, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's, like you it's made a fun, it little, fun little date idea. Yeah, yeah. It's like you made it yourself, you didn't have to buy it. I mean, you had to buy the ingredients, but like, much cheaper than buying egg noodles from the store. Cheaper I'd and say. maybe even healthier too. So at this point, these noodles are ready to, to cook. Um, mm. And probably the sooner the better, just getting them into some boiling water for honestly, depending on how thin you um, cut them and rolled them out, could be two or three minutes, could be up to seven minutes, depending on how, how done you like it. I always just like to take a noodle out and, and try it and see if it is to my liking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so cook it for a couple minutes in some boiling water and then strain it, serve it with your favorite sauce, 
So what we'll probably do with these noodles is obviously we're gonna, we're gonna boil these in a pot and then on the side we'll be making uh, some sort of an Alfredo sauce. The ingredients and our making them will be in the description of this video. Um, but the process of making that Alfredo sauce. You start with the butter and all of the amounts are gonna be in the description as well. So you start with your butter, melt it in a saucepan, saute up your garlic, add your heavy cream, let it simmer for about five minutes, and then you add your grated Parmesan cheese. And this that's kind of a more of a subjective thing. Like you can add more or less depending on taste and consistency, but however much is in the description is usually what we go with. You add some salt and pepper to taste, and then what you do is you take your noodles with tongs straight from the boiling water, put them into the saucepan with the sauce and kind of stir it around, get it nice and coated. If the sauce is too thick, use pasta water. Don't use normal water because pasta water has a lot of that nice starch and stuff that will help just give it a more smooth consistency. Mm -hmm. Or you could throw some marinara on it. That's yeah. that's the way I like to do it. Make go. it easy if you have uh, you know, jars of marinara laying around, or if you wanna buy some from the store, you can easily just add those, heat it up with the noodles. Or just butter, or mm -hmm. olive oil, mm -hmm. some Parmesan, some pepper, yep. really whatever, whatever you like. Yeah, pasta is incredibly flexible, so you can really suit <laughs> what your needs or desires in any way that you choose. Yeah. I just realized I've been playing with the pasta basically the entire time. <laughs> it's, kind of it's kind of satisfying just, and it's keeping it not stuck together. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's how you make homemade pasta yourself rather than just going to the store and buying it. But let us know in the comments down below if you tried this and just kind of how it went or if you have any suggestions for future cooking or baking videos, let us know about those as well. But for now, we will end it there and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.